Hi, this is Chris with Tweak Town. We're still here at Flash Memory Summit 2014, and I have Josh and Matt from IX Systems. Um, we uh, recently re we recently reviewed uh, IX Systems Free NAS Mini, uh, a NAS system with uh, four or five hard drives, a couple SSDs, and it was by far the fastest um, thousand dollar NAS product that we've tested, well, ever. And I doubt that, that anyone can even get close uh, at that price point uh, at this time. But part of the reason for that is IX Systems uses FreeNAS, um, which is an open source uh, software project. And Justin's gonna tell us a little bit about that today. And then we're gonna move on and talk about some of the new all flash systems uh, with Matt. So Justin, why don't you start and, and tell us a little bit about uh, FreeNAS and of course the new updates. So we, we took over the development of FreeNAS uh, 2010, yeah, 2009, it's been quite a years. Um, and basically we, we leveraged the ZFS file system and tried to build something around it. So uh, initially our, our problem was, here's an enterprise file system with enterprise features trying to distill it down into something that's usable. Uh, FreeNAS already had a fairly vibrant user community and yeah. uh, uh, we were trying to get uh, ZFS and its enterprise features packed down into something that the home user could use. Um, I, it's been a bit of a, bit of a journey. Um, I, I wouldn't call our first efforts at it easy to use by any means. But, uh, but I think we're, we're starting to get there at any rate. Um, we definitely have a performance uh, profile that's really hard to beat. Um, yeah. And scalability that, you know, you can, if you really want to build a home system with 100 drives in it, FreeNAS is up to the challenge for that as well. You, people build some big systems. We found that, uh, in that in that sort of space, if you're going to devote that sort of resources to things, it's best not to try and do that on your own. And so IX Systems actually sells FreeNAS-based devices. Um, and we actually have a, a enterprise version of FreeNAS that's tailored just so we can support it that we call TrueNAS um, to, to handle some of those bigger deployments. Now you, um, you mentioned the, um, the, uh, the, the usability um, and how some of the early stuff it's a little, a little difficult to, to set up for guys coming from, from other products. Uh, I actually had that problem. Uh, the first time we spoke and when we met was on a support call uh, for a user issue that it was just so simple, but you know, sometimes you just miss that sort of thing. Now you said something earlier when we spoke about um, some wizard systems coming into play and, and looking for ways to to uh, make it a little more user friendly for us guys that, that don't do this for a living. Yeah, we definitely we definitely built something that was a, a, a 747. There's no doubt about that. We tried to expose all of the complexity, all of the functionality, and and we did. And unfortunately, that's just not very usable uh, for a lot of people. And some of it's very necessary. If you're building a system with 100 drives or you're doing a lot of different things, you, you definitely are going to need more functionality. But for, especially for people who are just trying to you know, do something, I just want to share some files, I want to stream some movies, I want, whatever they want to do, they don't need the whole 747 cockpit experience. And so we've, we've spent a lot of time trying to distill it down and create a much simpler, a simpler view of things. So we've, we've written some wizards, we've tried to wrap some of the functionality with that, we've, we've done a lot of work to strip out the things you don't absolutely need um, and made the, the user interface much simpler to use. Okay. Um, at the same time, still providing the back-end scalability so that you can you can step in from that. You know, I have a four-drive system, it's just a home system, I'm just trying to stream some movies or it's a file server that me and my family can share all, and then scale it up to, wait a second, I want to power my VMware cluster with it and I'm going to add you know, 60 more drives to it and start doing some, some SAN type of stuff and then you can unlock that functionality as well. It's there under the hood, you just don't have to deal with it. Whereas the, the, the current and, and especially it's ironically even easier now than it was two years ago, it sort of faces you with this huge cockpit view of all this confusing switches and dials and knobs and readouts and say so, you know, like you lose the target. Oh, you need to press that 
button over there. Yeah. Problem solved. If only you knew to press that one button. Yeah. It's like you're looking at the sea of things. Going yeah. On. So but, we've really tried to, to simplify. It. Yeah. Well, Josh and I are we're system administrators by trade. You know, in, in the beginning, and so I think for the first pass, we did a really great job of creating a product that worked really well for system administrators, professional guys that did this for a living. Now we're kind of uh, you know running the gamut of you know people using this at home and using it all over the place. Solo, small business, or junior sysadmins and, and other people uh, you know that, that need a, a NAS or a SAN device. And so now with the first pass of the Wizard framework, I think it's just going to get easier and easier to set up over time. And that's that's in our uh, FreeNAS 9.3 release, which is coming out in October. Uh, it's also got some other things to, to make it easy to uh, to maintain, including automatic updates. So now you, it'll just flag that there's an update, click a button, and it'll apply it uh, on the fly in a patch format versus before. I don't know if you had to do it while you guys were testing, but you had to reinstall the entire firmware to get up to the latest version. So now we can automatically update, and we also move to uh, to uh, boot environments as well. So, so now before an update gets applied, uh, it takes a snapshot of your configuration. So if there's any problem or you found out, oh, you know, NFS uh, maybe is, is a little slower than it was on the previous version or you're having some problems upgrading, you can snap right back to your previous edition, roll right back. It's amazing. It's very cool. Now, your hardware, you know, I'm a believer and I actually would have had the, uh, the horns on if we had another pair here, because yeah. after testing your your first product, the free NAS mini, right on, thank you. Yeah, I, I was sold, you know, after we got past my my little issue of not being able to read the manual. So nobody uh, wants to read the manual. Yeah, so I just thought I knew what I was doing, but um, you've got some new hardware coming out. We do. Um, all Flash, yep. which of course we're here at Flash Memory Summit, and everyone here is talking about Flash. I can't figure out why. But uh, can you tell us a little sure. bit about that and maybe some more about TrueNAS? Absolutely. So TrueNAS is our enterprise professionally supported version of FreeNAS. So we take the FreeNAS software, we've got uh, some extra components to it, uh, basically uh, just the code that required to scale it out massively and, and have it uh, you know ready to use, tuned for enterprise support and performance. We then pair it with a custom hardware that we've designed and built, uh, x86 commodity hardware, but specifically put together for the purpose of enterprise storage, right? And so now you kind of get the entire experience, right? Instead of you know building your own car, hey, this car is finished ready to take out on the track, right? And that's called TrueNAS. Uh, this latest product that uh, Josh has been testing and, and helped build is called TrueFlash. And so, Josh, I know it's all SSD, and, and it was a screamer. Yep. So we took a bunch of SSDs, we, we coupled it together with ZFS. Um, ZFS added the dedupe functionality, online, real-time dedupe, mm -hmm. um, back in, I don't know, 2006, 2007. We finally found a recipe to make that work with all Flash. Um, that we can use in an online environment. We coupled it with a bunch of iSCSI work we're doing, and uh, and we're having great success using it as a backend for virtualization, uh, where we can get fairly significant dedupe ratios, uh, fairly significant uh, storage out of it. And so we have something like eight terabytes of usable storage, but after dedupe wow. ratios, we're seeing dedupe ratios that start at 10 to one. Um, and so it's you know acting like an 80 or 100 terabyte storage solution and providing the performance of what you would expect from ganging together 16 SSDs, which is just out of the, off the hook. Yeah. So, um, so we, we've had some pretty impressive IOPS numbers. We've had some pretty impressive performance. I've got some demos built up that are just, they're, they're, they're sort of, you just go, wow, you know, um, this is very cool. Yeah. So we've connected it 40 gig ethernet and uh, yeah, big quad yeah. socket machines for hypervisors and, and hopefully we'll be showing that off. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think I'm coming over uh, here in just a few oh, yeah. days. See so yeah. so if I'm going to be there, then, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll take some stuff with us and we'll figure out a way to, to test it. Right so, on. Yeah. But uh, hey, I want to thank you guys for coming Thanks, over and if they let us play with the, the new all all flash, true flash. The, the true flash that is all flash, we will go and uh, make a video and, and do some fun stuff right there. So uh, thanks you guys thank for coming you. out.
Thanks, Thanks for sir. having us. On behalf of the Queen Anne's Projects, Chris, I'd like to present you with these horns, my friend. All right. Because we know you're a little Damon. 